When I first heard the term jet boat, I thought to myself, what is that? Well, years later, here I have one. This is my 1968 Tahiti, and I believe it's a tornado model. I haven't been able to find much literature on a particular brand. And I'm going to show you how it works. What this boat has is a automobile engine that is hooked up direct drive to a impeller in a water pump. The water pump sucks up the water and shoots it out the back, and that is how the boat is propelled. This motor was taken out of a 1974 Cutlass when I got this boat with 100,000. Put a new oil pan on it and timing chain, a high volume pump, and was able to run it for another five or six years. It's getting pretty tired now, so I'm going to have some future videos on this on how to build a marine engine. So there's your car engine, and that that baby right there is hooked up on the back of the crank to a shaft that goes to the water pump. See it sucks water up through here, goes into the bowl of the pump, and shoots out what is called the nozzle. This particular boat has a Berkeley pump, and it's a split bowl design, you can see by the uh, bolts here. Being that it was a split bowl design, I was able to install a place diverter, which is a nozzle that actually goes up and down to direct the water flow. You can see the hydraulic ram here controls the nozzle. You can also get a manual cable operated nozzle, but um, this is really the way to go and it's, it's worth the extra money. There is a hydraulic pump that controls the nozzle. This is the front of the engine. You're probably asking yourself, where is everything? Well, the only two things on this engine that are sucking power are the fuel pump and the alternator, which is beneath this case. You're probably asking yourself, well, where's the water pump? There's a tap on the bowl. It's kind of hard to see. Water comes through this valve up to the engine. See this funny looking thing is actually um, a thermostat housing for marine application. A lot of people cheap out and don't get this and try to control the temperature with the valve back there and that's a really bad thing to do because uh, it can basically overheat the top half of your engine. And the, the purpose of this device here is to Make sure that your water-cooled exhaust manifolds always have water flow. You would close this valve and hook up a garden hose here if you're going to run it out of the lake. And this this piece you see here is critical. It's a um, a pressure relief valve at more than 15 psi it relieves pressure of the transom. A lot of people forget that and then they wonder why they're getting water in their engine. Here's the front of the boat. You can see it's a left hand steer. It has a, a foot pedal for the throttle. And that lever there operates the reverse control. When the flap is in the up position, water can come directly out the back, propelling the boat. When it is in the closed position, it redirects the water at a forward angle, which gives the bolt reverse. This funny looking thing is a mount for pulling water skiers. And this bolt is incredible as far as a whole shot and pulling skiers out. This device here is a clean out for the pump. If I pull it out, pretty tough to see inside there, but that's actually the impeller and there's no bowl stuffer or any high performance modifications on the shaft of this pump. You can see the exhaust exits through the transom. This is actually below the water line and it keeps the noise level down. It sounds pretty tough.
and just bolted in a couple uh, somewhat high back crease and bucket seats. Of course there are no straps in here, this is about the last thing you would ever want to be strapped into. So stay tuned, I'm going to be taking this engine out and replacing it with a 455. I'll be doing a mild build on this 455 here in this garage on a budget. And I'm also going to be taking the pump apart and making sure the wear ring's okay and all that good stuff.